Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. we got some breaking news to get into here. The Las Vegas Raiders have gone out and signed cornerback Chris Jones. We're going to be talking about Jones and some other news and rumors to go through, but today's show is presented by Manscaped. I want you all to get rid of your George W. Get it out of here. How do you do it? Manscaped.com, 20% off and free shipping. Use promo code Raiders. Father's Day right around the corner. So I figured I'd wake up early this morning, talk about my experience over the weekend in Las Vegas, talk about some of the things that I learned from being inside a Barcode Burger, but then the Raiders, they surprised us. They went out, they signed cornerback Chris Jones. So when I saw Chris Jones, I panicked a little bit because I was like, wait a minute, is this the punter? Okay, no, it's not the punter. Is it the defensive tackle? No, it's not the defensive tackle. It's cornerback Chris Jones. So he's played in 29 games, starting in only six. He spent last season with the Tennessee Titans. He's played for the Minnesota Vikings briefly, and I mean briefly, like one game with the Detroit Lions. Got his career started with the Arizona Cardinals. And the fact that Raiders OTAs are today, remember it's going to be June 13th and June 14th, you're going to see him, how he fits with this secondary here. And if you're looking for stats or you're looking for a lot of highlights, I'm sorry, you're really not going to find too many. Seven tackles last season for Tennessee, one pass breakup. 2019 was probably his best season with 22 tackles, six PBUs. But when you're talking about what type of corner are you going to get with Jones, he's not overly athletic. He's six foot. 200 pound, came out of Nebraska at the combine. He ran a 4.7240, which for those of you that follow the combine and a corner, that's really slow if I'm being 100% honest with you. But he does have good coverage ability. He's bad against the run. That should be being 100% with you. You're really only going to find somebody who has a little bit of versatility, who can be more of a coverage player. Again, though, with his limited athletic ability, I'm curious to see where he ends up fitting on the depth chart and if he does end up making the roster at the end of the day. So you guys go ahead here, be the judge. That's what the Raiders report is all about. It's the interaction. Not only am I keeping you guys up to date on the news and rumors, but this is also an interactive show. So A, B, C, D, or F, I want you to grade the signing of Chris Jones. I'm going to give this one a D grade, and that D stands for depth. He's not going to be your starter. He's not going to be someone who's going to come in and be like, wow, this dude is an absolute home run signing. No, it is a depth move, and when I think about the move, it makes me wonder what is happening with potentially some of the other players on the Raiders roster because with this move here, it puts guys like Cosby on lock. What about Cravon LeBlanc, Sam Webb, the UDFA? These are dudes who are on the roster bubble. Morrison, Samuels, who they just brought in a few weeks ago. But from what I have heard from the people that I've talked to, from the reports that have come out, the five names that have been really impressing thus far at Raiders minicamp, and that was last week, June 7th, June 8th, and June 9th, were these five names here. Rocky Sim, Raiders defensive back coach Jason Simmons could not say enough nice things about Rocks, and he's a pro's pro. Darius Phillips, I was told, looks good right now. They have confidence that he can be a slot cornerback. Nate Hobbs looks like an all-world beater, playing all over the football field. Heck, I was told that he looks like a top-10 cornerback. Amik Robertson, this is really good news. Coaching staff has been very impressed by Amik. And then Anthony Averett. So five corners that you're hoping can take that next step, no doubt about it. What I am going to say is I don't really have an update on Trayvon Mullen, but what I want you guys to do, because I know I'm going to be doing it, is keeping a close eye on some extra reports. I'm going to call some people, figure out what is the latest going on with Trayvon, who is dealing with an injury. He had surgery back on May 3rd, but with all the positive reports out there, from the corners that I just mentioned, on top of the fact that Mullen's not out there practicing, on top of the fact that the Raiders went out and they signed Chris Jones today, all I'm saying is this, keep an eye out for updates around Trayvon Mullen. So y'all, I love this, man. This is an awesome deal. I'm always about great deals. And Manscaped is hooking up Raider fans here who watch the Raiders report. So they got a new... Uh, I guess package, the Platinum Package. And if you use our promo code Raiders, 
at manscaped.com. You can get all of these items right here for $123. And I say save 52% because if you were to buy the Lawnmower 4.0, the Weed Whacker, the two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, body wash, deodorant, crop preserver, crop reviver, Magic Mac, the shed, and the boxers. If you were to buy all of that, it'd be 256 bucks. No. If you use promo code Raiders at manscaped.com, you can get all of that for $123.99. So if you need a Father's Day gift, if you're wondering to have a fun gift just to give to one of your buddies, we got you covered here. I'm all about saving. This is like a Black Friday type of deal. So get it now. Save it for somebody maybe during Christmas time. Manscaped's hooking y'all up. And you technically get the boxers and the shed, which is this thing right here, all for free. The boxers, most comfortable boxers you'll ever wear. Believe it, baby. Promo code Raiders again, manscaped.com. So now that we're talking about the news around Chris Jones, I do have a slight injury update to keep you guys in the loop here around Raiders defensive tackle Bilal Nichols. I was told he's dealing with a knee injury. I can't get into all the logistics of what that injury is. He's not going to be participating or practicing at Raiders OTAs. He missed the final two days at minicamp, and I'm hoping he's going to be okay by the preseason. I was told he will 100% be ready by the regular season. The reason why this is notable here is because when the Raiders signed Nichols this offseason during free agency, they gave him a two-year deal. He can make up to $11 million. Last week on the show, I said Nichols is the best defensive tackle that the Raiders currently have. He's more of a pass rusher, if you will, eight sacks over the past two seasons. Why this gives me a little bit of a nervous feeling is because also Jonathan Hankins is dealing with an injury. So your top two defensive tackles, Jonathan Hankins, Bilal Nichols, both told will be ready by the regular season, are currently injured. And if they, if you had to play right now, they wouldn't be able to do it. So that means you have Neil Farrell Jr., Matthew Butler, two rookies, not a lot of experience there. So I can confidently sit up here and say that the weakest link right now, the biggest team need for the Raiders is the defensive tackle position. Is there a lot of bodies there? You have 10 DTs right now, yes. But do I have really a lot of confidence in that position? A position that really struggled last season for the Raiders, ranking 19th in the league in terms of rushing yards given up. I want Bilal to be healthy. I hope he is healthy. Now, the next thing that we're going to be talking about here is some DTs to look out for. We're going to talk about in Dominican Sioux because I was told that the Raiders are 100% doing their homework on defensive tackles right now. You could even see a player signed as early as this week, so please keep that in mind. Speaking of some DTs, man, major shout out to Barcode Burger, shout out to Cody, shout out to Jonathan Hankins, shout out to Timmy as well, Hanlon. He was my dude filming all this stuff, had an amazing event over the weekend. Raising charity money. We raised over $1,000 for the Just One Project. We had autograph signing, a lot of pictures, and it was me taking on Jonathan Hankins in a burger eating contest. I will be posting that video hopefully uh, either a little bit later on today or futuristic, I don't know, later on in the week. It was a packed house, though. I was the underdog. I was told I was given plus 180 odds, and Man, I was getting ripped on by all the Raiders players and everyone. So how about this? I'm not going to tell you who won, but who do you all think won? Do you think I took down Hank, or do you think Big Time Hank took down me? Type MR for Mitchell Renz. Type JH for Jonathan Hankins. Let me know down in the comments. Also, some stuff that you have forward to looking for is not just Hankins and I ripping through a burger. I also have some interviews as well coming out with Hank. I asked these players five questions, some serious, some fun. Kendall Vickers did beat me at rock, paper, scissors, but Kendall, I'm going to get you next time. I talked to Andre James about what he thought about the offensive line, hear what he had to say. And this picture, I promise y'all, I'm not a midget. I'm, a, I'm five foot ten. Colt Miller is all of six foot nine. He can do your taxes and he can protect Derek Carr's blind side. I mean, he was just a humongous person. The angle of this picture isn't doing me any favors either, but yes, I do look like Colton's younger brother. 
<laughs> it's it's a funny picture. If you guys want to throw this one out there on social media, just make sure you tag me in it. So not only did I keep you guys up to date on the Bilal Nichols injury, not only did I keep you up to date on Chris Jones signing with the Silver and Black, we will have some player interviews coming out, which if you want to hear more about the defense, if you want to hear more about the offensive line especially, hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications because I don't want you to miss it. So with the Bilal Nichols injury, with the injury to Jonathan Hankins and the uncertainty around a lot of the Raiders' defensive tackles, the name that should be popping up in your mind, Indomitian Sue. And with the injuries here, I want you all to keep a close tab on Indomitian because I know for a fact that the Raiders are interested. I know the Raiders are doing their homework at the defensive tackle position. You have plenty of cap or salary cap space as it stands right now to make it happen. But before the day started, Raiders were at $22.5 million in overall salary cap space. I don't have the exact numbers yet, and you probably won't have them today, on how much money the Raiders gave um, my gosh, Chris Jones, from top to bottom, how many years it is, it's going to be a one-year deal. But we don't have all those numbers yet. So in terms of 22.5, that's the number I'm working off of. Let's just say the Raiders are going to be slightly over $20 million in salary cap space. So you got two injuries. You have a major team need. Not only should you keep tabs on Adamic and Sue, here are their five names at the defensive tackle position. Sheldon Richardson... I'm just going to call him Larry O, Star Latule, Linval Joseph, and then a name that has actually been brought up to me over the weekend was Eddie Goldman. So if you remember, Blah Nichols, Bears player. Champ, uh, Champ Kelly brought over from the Bears as well. I was told Eddie Goldman is a player to watch out for potentially joining the Las Vegas Raiders. So is it time? Is it time right now? Why for yes and for no? For the Raiders to sign a defensive tackle. I have confidence in Hankins. I have confidence in Bilal Nichols. I'm hoping Matthew Butler. I'm hoping Neil Farrell Jr. take that step in their rookie year. You also got some backup players like Vernon Butler is a solid guy. But when I look at the Raiders defensive tackle room last season. And they were 19th against the run. And they were an okay team. Maybe even slightly below average. DTs. I think that that unit was stronger than what the Raiders have right now, which is why I am typing my Y for yes. It's why I'm going to go ahead and say the team's biggest need right now is bolstering that interior defensive line for the Raiders because if they don't, it could be a kind of a rough season. I know you're worried about Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, Russell Wilson, all those quarterbacks very talented. But if they can also get their running game going – not going to be a pretty picture for the Raiders. So this weekend, met a lot of awesome people, and major shout-out to everyone who came out to the event. If I took a picture with you, if you have something, please post it on IG, post it on Twitter, at MitchellRens365. What I did was I found already a lot of pictures out there, and so shout-out to the people who came across to the event. My guy, Madman Raider, he, uh, he's been sub since 10K, and this was probably one of my favorite pictures here because I had to explain to him how you tag somebody on Facebook, and he just did hashtag Mitchell Wren. So, uh, bro, appreciate you, and thank you for letting me sign your football, though I think that loses its value. Man, we met a lot of awesome people that came out to support. It was $20 to get in. It was a packed house. These two guys here, they told me they drove six hours to come to the event. Pretty incredible. And then on top of that, I met these three people here, and then they were like, hey, we flew all the way in. Uh, they took a flight to come to the event. That's the dedication you're looking for from Raider Nation, and that's why I think a lot of people are like, all right, Raider Nation is totally, totally built different. So if you haven't already, please, if we took a picture, if we got something, shout out to Raider Allegiance for the T-shirt. I was trying to rep everyone that took time out of their day to come to the event. It was all for a very, very good cause. So the reason why we made this video was the Raiders signed Chris Jones. I'm going to be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern time. 3 p.m. Pacific. The only way that I go live a little bit earlier is if there is more breaking news, if there's like a major, major story that I have to cover. So if you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you. Hit that subscribe button. And if anything changes from till now until I go live tomorrow, I promise you, you'll be getting a video.